an atom's quest to become stable by having a full shell of electrons is what leads to the formation of molecules because a lot of atoms have to interact with each other in order to get the electrons that they need to have full outer shells. Molecules are formed when two or more atoms share chemical bonds. They're bonded together. There are lots of different ways to show what molecules look like. Now, obviously, molecules are so small, we're never going to be able to see molecules with our eyes. And at this point, we don't have microscopes that can see most molecules with any degree of clarity. So we have to have models for molecules instead that give us an idea of how the atoms are joined together in order to form the molecule. The simplest way to describe a molecule is with its molecular formula. The molecular formula is simple and straightforward and it tells you which atoms are present in the molecule and how many of them. For example, water has a molecular formula of H2O. That means we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom that make up water. Something more complicated, like LSD, has a molecular formula of C20, H25, N3O. What that tells us is that we have 20 carbon atoms, 25 hydrogen atoms, 3 nitrogen atoms, and an oxygen. What the molecular formula doesn't tell us is anything about how these atoms are arranged. How are they connected to each other? So that's where some of the other forms of models are helpful. We can have electron configuration models that actually show us the electrons that are involved and which electrons are being shared between atoms. We could look at a molecular structure model like this that gives us an idea of which atoms are connected to each other. And this, we use the symbols for the elements and where they're connected with a line that represents a bond between those atoms. So here is a molecule of oxygen and you can see that there are lines connecting it to two hydrogens. So this is showing us the structure of water. Both of the hydrogens are connected to the oxygen. In very complicated molecular structural diagrams, we often simplify it by leaving out the symbol for carbon. Most of the molecules we're going to be looking at contain a lot of carbon, and so we simplify by leaving out the symbol for the carbon and instead just drawing shapes. When we see a shape like the shape for the structure of LSD, we can see where we have oxygens and we can see where the nitrogens are but we don't put in all of the hydrogens or all of the carbons. Instead, we draw shapes, and at each point of the shape, we assume there is a carbon, and then the lines between those points are representing the bonds between those carbons. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more of a three-dimensional or a little more visual model, and so we'll often see things in the ball and stick model form, where the nucleus of each atom is represented with a ball, in this case, we have a red ball for oxygen and white balls for hydrogen. Or down here in LSD, we have the red for the oxygen, white for the hydrogen, blue for the nitrogen, and black representing the carbon. And then we have sticks or lines that are connecting the balls together to show, to show the bonds that are holding the different atoms together. But even this doesn't always give us a good idea of the actual shape of a molecule. So one more model we can look at is what's called a space filling model. In the space filling models, we use a sphere that actually is the size of the whole atom, not just the nucleus. So it's representing the electrons as well. And we can see how these are actually shoved together to form an overall shape of the molecule. The color coding will tend to remain the same with red for oxygen, white for hydrogens, and black for carbon and blue for nitrogen. It's important that you're familiar with these different types of models because as we look at diagrams and figures for the rest of this for the rest of this semester, we're going to see a whole lot of different models and I want you to be able to understand what they're representing. It is important to know something about the structure of the molecules because molecules with different structures have different functions. And this is a key point about anatomy and physiology that is going to come up again and again. The function of something is determined by its structure. That's why we like to study anatomy and physiology together. 
The structure will determine the function. And this is true of atoms as well as organs and whole bodies. Let's look at an example. If we look at the molecular formula C2H6O, we have two carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen. But that molecular formula doesn't tell us the arrangement of the atoms. And the arrangement of the atoms is significant. We can arrange the atoms here in a couple of different ways. If we put the oxygen in the middle, that gives us dimethyl ether. Dimethyl ether is a gas at room temperature, and it's not particularly good for you to be exposed to. On the other hand, if we put the oxygen at the end of the molecule, then we have ethanol. Ethanol is a liquid at room temperature, and it's better known as the alcohol that's found in beverages that may be consumed in moderation by persons over the age of 21. That very small change in the structure gives it a very different function than dimethyl ether. When we have a situation like this, where we have two different molecules that have the same molecular formula, so the same numbers of the different types of atoms, but the atoms are arranged differently, that's called an isomer. So not only is the formula of a molecule important, but the structure of that, or the arrangement of the atoms, is important as well.